All right, at the risk of sounding like really hung up on my mom's pantry, one of the things that surprised me when we did the makeover in her pantry a week and a half ago was how easy it was for her to get rid of stuff. I was so surprised and she even said 20 years ago, 10 years ago, she's like, I would not have been able to part with this stuff, but now I don't want to manage it anymore. It's because she's seen all your videos. <laughs> well, I thought maybe it had something to do <laughs> with Swedish death cleaning. And so what is this extreme sport that you speak of? I have not <laughs> heard, of heard of it. Diana's never heard of it. So we it need to talk about this. It sounds terrible. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the day, more specifically, like what age should we get started? And what it is. <laughs> yeah, and what it is. <laughs> We went from this, what's the Swedish, isn't it a Swedish one where everything is about how everything feels Huga. in your home? Yeah. So we've gone from Huga. Is that also Swedish? It's something Or European. Norwegian or one of those. Like, I guess I don't know yet. Okay. We've gone from that. Like how does everything feel and function and make you feel good in your home yeah. to how do we just uh, get to, ready for... You know what? I mean, the premise of the book is, this is uh, Margaret Magnuson wrote The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning and she says... The only thing we know for sure is that one day we will die, but before that we can do anything. And so, I mean, she talks about, this is actually in Sweden is something that's well known is this okay. art of decluttering before you pass on. Okay. So she outlines in her book how you can do it, but more importantly, she says that this is a gift that we can give to our family so that they don't have to be stressed by going through our belongings after we pass. And I know many of you have shared stories of having to go through your loved one's things after they've passed and how stressful that was. Yeah. And so today, let's talk a little bit about her two questions that she uses for deciding if we should keep something or not. And also, what age should we get started? And why do we have this tendency to collect stuff in the first place? So maybe that's probably the yeah. best place to start because my mom was ashamed of her pantry. And what we have to remember, and I'm so glad that Margaret points this out in her book, is that we are hardwired to hoard. We are gatherers at the core of our existence. So that is what we do. The problem is now we are surrounded by abundance and so it has never been easier to gather and gather and gather. Right? It's not just like a few meaningful trinkets that you gather anymore. It's no. Like... <laughs> or enough food to get through the winter no. and then you'll have to regather again, right? Like we could literally no. gather years worth of stuff. Yeah. And so it's important to remember that that's how we're hardwired. And she even says, it's amazing and also a little strange how many things we accumulate in a lifetime. Yeah. It just happens and it happens to all of us. So I love the two questions. She makes it very simple. The first one is, are you using it? So are you currently currently using this item? And if not, then we agree to pass it on. The second question is, will anyone I know be happier if I save this? Mm -hmm. And what's cool is that if you're not sure, if, if I say like, okay, this is a piece of my grandma's milk glass, would my daughters want it after I've passed away? She says, go ahead and ask them. So I could say, Adeline, this was your great grandma's milk glass. Okay. Is this something that you would want to have in your home after I've passed away? And they have to feel free to say yes or no. Not like you really want this when yeah. after like, right, this <laughs> was your great grandma. So much meaning this to you. Was, yeah. you know? <laughs> and what she says is don't bother offering something. If I know Adeline has never cared about my grandma's milk glass collection, yeah. then don't offer, like, don't be silly. Don't offer something that you're pretty sure that they don't want because that's placing a burden yeah. on them. And similarly, she says, you can't wait around forever. You know, if Adeline says, well, I don't know. She says, don't wait around forever waiting for them to come around to if they want it or not. So she says, go ahead. And sometimes you must give cherished things away with the wish that they end up with someone who will create new memories of their own. So yeah. having the foresight to say, you know what? I don't want to force this stuff on my kids and I would rather it go to someone who is going to cherish it yeah. and enjoy it. So, I mean, being a very open-handed about it. And our grandparents passed away unexpectedly. So we were left with a whole home full of belongings. Mm -hmm. And I always, what I always think about though is, I mean, we had each family got to go in at a specific time and choose items. So we had our pick of all of, I mean, I think grandma had two china cabinets mm -hmm. plus storage, plus the kitchen. Like 
and the items that we chose it's like we each chose one thing that we remembered from the holidays or we yeah. remembered always seeing on her cabinet you yeah. know and it was that one thing that we've saved now to right. remember grandma with you know so i think sometimes we think we need the whole collection or we need all of these items in right. storage when really the memories that have been formed were around the things that were used you mm -hmm. know or that we saw every time that we were there yeah exactly and i love what she says as we now try to discern what age should we start this at <laughs> she says putting your house in order if you can do it is one of the most comforting activities and the benefits of it are incalculable. Wow. And so that's why my hope is that we don't put this off until we're retirement age. I know we have many friends who are retirement age and this is something you've already been thinking quite a bit about, mm -hmm. but I hope to, for those of us who are even younger, that we don't put it off yeah. until, that we say the benefits are incalculable of simplifying my house now and just keeping the things around me that I enjoy, that add value to my life, and getting rid of the stuff that has no value and certainly no one else is gonna want once we're no longer here. And this is why you exist, right? <laughs> this is, the benefits are incalculable. Yeah. Like I don't, that's kind of a hard tagline to say. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean really, this yeah. has been the drum that changing. you've been meeting, being yeah. because it changes how the, the experience you have with your children, mm -hmm. experience you have in your home, with your loved ones, with how you engage with other people yeah. based on how free you feel because of right your surroundings you know and earlier this week we talked about like the inventory checklist and i was kind of making light of it but i do think sometimes we have to take the emotion out of it so we'll link to that video down below of how we can kind of objectively look at all of the stuff um in our house and really decide like is it adding value? Is it making my life easier and better? So, or would somebody else want it down the or road? Or would somebody else want it even? Yeah. And she also says, life will be more pleasant and comfortable if we get rid of some of the abundance. All right, I'm gonna go find Adeline. Yeah. <laughs> Adeline? <laughs> so we might not You're go 12. that far at this age, you know? Okay. <laughs> but like you said, probably she's not gonna want like 500 pieces yeah. of it, you know? Well, and when we're helping mom, Mm -hmm. And she is at a different place now too, totally. where she's thinking this way and it's like, okay, what are the things that we're going to really treasure and have down the road? Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I love the old adage. If you need something done, ask a busy person. <laughs> have you yeah. heard that? Oh, yeah, like, and I feel like I am that busy person that everybody asks. <laughs> it's so hard to say no, isn't it? Yeah, like I I'm just, getting better at it, getting yet. Better at it. <laughs> I actually, I was driving my three-year-old and my three-year-old niece to swim lessons and Dawn called um, and she said, what are you doing? And I said, well, driving the girls to swim, swim lessons. And I think you laughed. Yeah. I think you were like, why? Like and you really had like of all the things you have going on right now. <laughs> and I love that you're like, everything about your life has been simplified. So even to the point of like, maybe your three-year-old doesn't need swim lessons just because everybody else is doing it this summer, you know? So I appreciated that perspective. We have our reasons, and maybe yeah. you do too, <laughs> for putting your kids in swimming lessons right now. Um, I will say it made our week crazy. Yeah. And uh, the thing I'm learning over and over, and experienced parents know this, is how much kids need their routine. Yeah. So we actually just had the last day of swimming lessons. It was a two-week program. I knew at least we needed to do it every day so yeah. they would mm -hmm. get more comfortable in the water. The very last day was the only day that I could actually just sit on the bench and watch them. Like it just took that long for them to get in the rhythm and feel comfortable. Yeah. And like, this is how we get in the pool and this is who we're with. And, mm -hmm. and so, I mean, it's amazing. So i I won't be doing that again. <laughs> so we can take them swimming and swimming. Yeah. So Princeton's a professional swimmer and it'll be fine. So I say all this to say there's a passage in the Bible that talks about being still. And it's just so simple. It's Psalm 46. It says, be still and know that I am God. And summer is a great time to try and slow down a little bit. But I just love this commentary by Jill uh, Briscoe. She said, the Lord is not looking for someone who's over busy and overtired and needing more to do. And he's also not like sitting in heaven, wringing in his hands going, well, how am I going to get this done? You know, like, okay, I just got to find a busy person because they get things done. Yeah. It's actually the inverse because when we're able to slow ourselves down and quiet our hearts, that's usually when we hear from God, Yeah. you know? And so actually it's the inverse that's true is he's like going like, all right, 
who's slowed down a little bit, yeah. who's taken time just to like let their hearts just rest a little, you know, so that I can whisper to them and prompt them in this season. And obviously we know the reasons that it's hard, mm -hmm. but I just have been feeling that encouragement that it's summer, let's protect our schedules right. a little bit, let's <clears throat> maybe try not to, I know it's too late now, but not to do every little thing that pops up, <laughs> you know, and to be aware of that. Like, yeah. hey, I wanna be used of God. I wanna right. be in line with his will and what he's doing, and so I need to make time to settle a little. And I think, I mean, one might even say that the benefits of slowing down your schedule are incalculable as well. No, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and not waiting until you're dead. And I think that's what I knew that. <laughs> right. Yeah, I thought that was, that was a little crass and a little funny. Yeah. And you just kind of kept going. But okay, sure. I didn't mean to be too crass about no, that. No, and I think that's what when you said, like, oh, we're going to swim lessons, it wasn't that swim lessons are bad. It was that I know you're coming out of a crazy yeah. season already and that there hasn't been a lot of margin, consistency, and yeah, oh, yeah. rhythm or to your days routine. Yeah. right now. And so. It was kind of like, oh, one more thing, you know? And so mm -hmm. obviously hindsight's twenty twenty. But if we do just need to recognize, yeah, I'm in a season where I need to pare down and mm -hmm. try and get back to a place where I can enjoy some of these benefits. Yeah. Then we'll talk about swimming lessons. <laughs> so. I remember uh, talking to a girlfriend and she was in one of those like frenzied places where it's like her marriage was strained, her kids were strained, her work was stressful. And, and she was like, you know, just kind of like, what do I do? And like, you know, when you're on the phone with someone like that, you want to provide comfort and like advice or something. And, and I was just like, it just was so heavy on my heart. I was like, wow, can you just carve out like 30 minutes just to quiet yourself with the Lord? Mm -hmm. You know, even not even the Lord, like just, yeah. like, just to sit. We don't even need to over spiritualize yeah. this, but right. just like no phone, no TV, no kids. Like, could you find a quiet corner for 30 minutes? You know? And I remember talking to her a few days later and I was like, Hey, could, did we be able to find that pocket of time? And she's like, no, this came up, this came up, whatever. And I totally get it. Yeah. But we get to that point where it's like really the only thing that can help you right now is just reconnecting your heart with yeah. the Lord, you know? And when we're in that frenzied place, it's like, you just need to drink a water, you know, mm -hmm. and a little, probably sleep, but yeah. you know, <laughs> just like a little bit of time for you. And, and from there then it's amazing the perspective that you gain, yeah. the hope that refills your heart and even the creative solutions that you have for the things that are going on around you. Yeah, that's good. And if you're just looking for a really practical tool, we love the the Bible Recap um, podcast. I've loved that I feel like the full gamut, whether you're just getting started on your spiritual journey or a mature believer, I don't even like using those terms, but yeah. you know, just more seasoned uh, in your faith, I feel like everybody loves it and benefits from it and just yeah. like the structure that it adds to their Bible reading and learning. So we yeah. love the Bible recap and we can put some details for that down below. Yeah, and it's like eight to 10 minutes. Perfect, like teaching. honestly. Yeah. And then you can either listen to or read the scripture that goes along with it. Don't you feel, you feel so oh. refreshed and like a rock and like star. smart after yeah. you do that. Yeah. yeah. And they're calling so, like Diana and you're like, oh, did you hear this today? Did you know, know. this? This is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> you and feel so, really smart too. <laughs> wow. One of the best ways just to connect in and, yeah, really and quiet good. yourself. So yeah. also I got, I got Princeton an eye massager for Father's Day. <laughs> Have you seen these on Instagram? Ever, like I feel like everybody on Instagram for whatever reason was pushing these eye massagers. Okay. So when <laughs> when one was on sale, I got it. Okay. But the reason I bring this up, when you have that thing on your face, it feels awesome, but you also can't be on your phone or watching TV. Yeah. So you're just so then I'll put in my headphones with the Bible recap and I'll just put that thing on my face and like relax a little bit. <laughs> I feel like it just got really weird. <laughs> no, it's, but no. it's good. Look it up. The we'll reviews, link to it down below. Read the reviews on Amazon. But They're, does it like massage your eyeballs it does, or like around? It does your eyes, but it's like around and like the, your temples. Oh, I could get on board it's with like, the temple I think they massage. should call it a face massager. Does okay. that sound less weird? A little bit. Yeah. I okay. wish it did your whole face though. All right. We'll link to okay. it down below. You can decide for yourself. I don't know what just happened here either. <laughs> just for the record, other than it's summer, I don't know yeah. what. So okay. I'm going to pray. We'll link yep. to like all those things. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we wish you the very best. So, <laughs> so Father, I thank you. Lord, thank you for an opportunity this summer to maybe say no to a few things here and there. Um, but ultimately, Lord, just to allow ourselves to be still and to know that you are God. To know that we can hear from you. To know that we can be 
encouraged by you, that our hearts can be restored uh, by just a touch of your hand or a whisper through your Holy Spirit. And so, Father, I ask, give us grace, Lord, to slow down. Give us grace to say no. Uh, give us grace, even if it feels scary right now, to just quiet ourselves and our hearts before you. So, Father, I just thank you. I just pray, even right now, that we would receive the refreshment of your Holy Spirit, that our hearts would be filled with hope for the future, Lord, and even we would be strengthened in our faith as we turn our hearts toward you. So I bless each one of us now in Jesus' name. Amen.